Serious, medical professionals of Reddit, what are some interesting little known facts about how the human body operates that most of us are not aware of? It's not uncommon for people to have extra small bones in their feet or hands. My mother recently twisted her ankle and the x-ray revealed a small bit of bone. One of the doctors thought at first she had broken a bone but it turned out the bone was there the whole time. Corneas can get their oxygen directly from room air. Probably why wearing contact lenses for long make your eyes feel horrible. We can resuscitate 22 week gestation babies. This seems to blow so many people away when I tell them this. That's barely halfway through a pregnancy most people don't even learn the gender until 20 weeks. They rarely have good outcomes and they almost always have complications. But it can be done. I have a 5 year old 22 weeker sitting in front of me right now shoveling cornflakes into his mouth. He was very sick for several months, but has been fine ever since discharge. Sleep tech here. I always thought it was cool that once you enter REM, your brain sends a signal to your spinal cord to paralyze you. Which is why if a person is disturbed in the middle of REM, they can experience sleep paralysis. Their mind is awake but the body hasn't gotten the signal that their sleep cycle ended so they are not able to move. I have experienced this a few times, it's terrifying. 90% of serotonin is produced in the gut. If people knew this, they would probably eat healthier. When you twist your forearm your muscles are pulling on two parallel bones so they cross. Kinda cool to think about. Breast milk actually changes its composition depending on the individual nutritional needs of the child drinking it. If a pregnant woman's heart tissue is damaged, her fetus will send stem cells to repair it. Saccadic masking is the process of your brain freezing an image if your eyes move over it too quickly. This prevents humans from getting the equivalent of motion blur. Nerves are composed of fibers. Each fiber is a single cell that runs from your spinal cord to its destination. It's one long tube, not a series of connections. That means you have cells that are 3 feet long running to your toes. The frick. 2. We have a devoted section of our immune system called the innate immune system that is active 24 stroke 7. This includes your skin, mucus, and my one of my favorites, macrophages, which literally eat invaders, chop their bits up, and display them on the macrophages outer surface for other immune cells, T cells, to see. I think of them as bite sized, helpful Vlad the Impalers. Did you know you can slow your heart rate way down by taking a huge dump? Well you can. Your autonomic nervous system is controlled by your vagus nerve. You know it as fight or flight. It's like the gas and the brakes. Well you can stimulate the brakes when you get suddenly frightened. Jump in cold water. Even having a full belly can stimulate it, which explains why you get tired after a huge meal. But it also gets stimulated when you bear down. Like when you're struggling to poop. That's why if you have a bad ticker, it's possible to die on the crapper. We find a lot of people dead on the toilet. A lot. Bones bleed. Your blood has an incredibly small range of acceptable pH. 7.35 7.45. I've had a lot of people ask me if they need to eat different. Take supplements. Etc. Because they've heard that they might be too acidic or alkaline. I need to explain to them that it's mostly marketing for various supplements that makes them think this. And that your body is very good at making sure your acid base homeostasis is maintained. This is one that irks me. So much marketing around the idea that your body needs to be more alkaline. If your blood pH is much outside that 7.35 7.45 range. You will run into serious problems and likely need IQ care. Our immune system is pretty freaking cool once you learn how it works. For example, there are cells in our body that make bleach to kill off bacteria. How our immune system recognizes ours versus whatever else. It literally creates so much combinations of receptors that it can recognize almost any macromolecule on earth and possibly the universe. And later it just kill those cells that can recognize our. And it does that in part by scrambling a specific area of DNA. Organism level evolution would be too slow for humans to keep up with changing microorganisms. So instead we have white blood cells that scramble up a part of their DNA to make receptors that can target an extremely broad variety of things. Super extreme and dark. But if you are ever in a situation where someone has a knife at your throat, put your head all the way back. 
your right and left carotid arteries, which which are the main sources of blood supply to your brain, and the vertebral arteries, will move to the side so that you will likely survive if your throat is cut. But your windpipe, the one that delivers oxygenated air to your lungs and is exchanged with deoxygenated blood in the lungs that later feeds your brain will be slit wide open and you will probably still die. Med student here, less of a body fact, more or less a fact about us, we're not entirely sure how anesthetic knocks you out and stops you feeling pain, we're not even sure how it works in the first place, all that we know is that it works. Vet student, similar fact, there was a drug, don't remember what it's called because it's not on the long list of drugs I need to know for the exam tomorrow, used for years to sedate horses for surgery, after decades of use. Someone finally discovered that it doesn't actually block pain or consciousness, and that the only thing it does is paralyzes the horses so they can't react to the pain. It is possible to be born with a heart that faces the wrong way, meaning it faces to the right instead of the left. The condition is called extracardia. There are over 30 blood groups. When we type your blood is goes way beyond abo. Your body is really good at hiding tumors, or rather tumors are just really great at hiding themselves. This is mainly in part due to tumors just being a clumped mess of your own cells, unfortunate accidents that are now destined to multiply for eternity until they devour their own host from within. What many of us don't realize is that most of the time, cancer is not detected easily on its own. Sure, there will be some people who may start noticing an abnormal lump in their neck and go to get it checked. But for every one person where cancer easily presents itself, there are nine where it is found incidentally via other means. A lady might not even know she has cancer until she gets out of bed one day and suddenly fractures her femur. When she goes to get it checked she's told that she has metastatic ovarian cancer, which had spread to her bones and weakened them. Some cancers can hide for a very long time. This woman may not have gotten her cancer diagnosed because her symptoms probably just would have been some nausea or fatigue. Despite that, for certain disease sites, i.e. prostate and breast, there is regular screening which can help detect the cancer early on. But there will always be that one person whose life is literally destroyed overnight because the cancer spread to their spine, and cord compression left them permanently paralyzed. Cancer truly is an enigma. Pediatric neurotrauma IQ are in here sometimes. When people have swelling on their brain, a portion of the skull will be removed and placed in a subcutaneous pocket in the abdomen until it can be replaced weeks, months later once the swelling has gone back down. <laughs> Nursing student, I've just learned this year even after working on hospital floors for years, we can infuse medication through your bones. It's called intraosseous infusion. They drill a hole into your bone, typically the tibia with a special drill and bit, then they use saline to move the marrow out of the way and create a pocket they can infuse medications into. Apparently the drilling bit doesn't hurt too bad. The injecting of saline and the infusion of medication apparently hurts like a bee though. It's usually done in emergency situations when the patient is going to die and they can't get IV access. I feel like a lot of people outside of healthcare don't know this. I also think a lot of people in healthcare might not know this. If your blood is RH negative but you have the possibility to carry a baby with a positive blood type, you have to get a special shot just in case the fetus bleeds because otherwise your body would basically attack the fetus as a dangerous foreign object. I'm not entirely a professional, but I worked as an EMT firefighter for a while. Every single cardiac arrest we went to was found on the toilet. Having a heart attack feels like you have to poop so they go sit on the toilet and the force of them pushing actually helps in stopping their heart. I told my boss this and now he is scared to take a crap. Med student chiming in. A majority of drugs only work because we have pre-existing receptors that bind to similar molecules that our body normally uses. For example, our body only reacts to opioids because we have endogenous opioid receptors to begin with. It's just that usually these drugs bind to our normal receptors super hard or for a longer time. Thank you answering this question I didn't even know I had. Nurse here, I work in the cath lab, which is where people go to have angiograms, rays of the arteries of the heart to check for blockages and sometimes get stents if they do. One of the most incredible things I find about the human body is that sometimes when people develop blockages over a period of time, their body develops what we call collaterals. 
They develop grow their own natural bypasses in the heart around the blockage. It's so cool that the body can do that. This happened to my dad. The doctor seemed so excited when explaining it to us. I thought it was pretty awesome. That max heart rate during exercise is a function of cellular biology. Unless you have other cardiac abnormalities, your ventricles, the pumping chambers that create a pulse, can't accept impulses beyond a certain range no matter how hard you work out. The connection between the atria, collecting chambers, and ventricles is primarily regulated by calcium moving across the cell membrane, not the sodium potassium pump. So unless you have a congenital defect of conduction or your ventricles are firing independently, which can soon become fatal, that max heart rate is pretty consistent. It's also true that the atrial rate is similarly limited. There is not enough pressure produced from a pumping heart to bring the blood back to the heart once it has passed blood to tissues that need it. Your veins, the vessels that carry unoxygenated blood back to the heart, is filled with valves. You actually use your muscles to squeeze the blood up movement by movement. The valves ensure the blood doesn't go back down as you move. Also, not completely human body but, an MRI imager actually uses magnets to line all of the hydrogen atoms in your body mostly from water and fat, and from there uses fancy physics to get the image back. The magnet used in the clinic typically has 3 times higher magnetic force than a magnet that picks up cars at the salvage yard. MRI and MI guy here. In research, we use magnets that are 3-4x stronger magnets than the ones used with humans. MRI is truly incredible. Nerves are very large. There are a couple in your body that are more thick than a standard drinking straw. Med student here. Always thought that teratomas were very interesting. Although I'm generally not too sure how little known they are. Essentially, it's possible that females can grow things like hair, muscle, teeth, and bone in a little pouch. But here's the thing. The pouch is located right on the ovary. Growing teeth in the ovaries. Always thought it was a bit weird. You can even grow things like thyroid tissue or skin cancer inside of the teratoma. Anyway, they usually get removed without too much issue. But they're kind of gross. You can google it if you're curious to see pictures. Wikipedia says men get them, too. Respiratory therapist student. If you have surgery or are sick the best thing you can do to keep your lungs open when you're confined to a bed is coughing. The pressure will help open any areas that may have collapsed. Right on. Take deep breaths. Cough. Use your incentive spirometer. It helps avoid atelectasis and can lessen your chances of getting pneumonia. I feel like many people don't understand the importance of doing these things post-operatively. The average person can only use about 10-20% of their actual muscle strength. With training, you can bring it up to over 30%. Adrenaline can make it go up to 100%, or at least very close. Medical assistant here. Our brains are crazy and not really well understood. People with severe anxiety can give themselves seizures of the shaking and foaming at the mouth kind. The traditional anti-epileptic medications do not help these kind of seizures. The standard treatment is cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. As someone with anxiety, I super didn't need to know this. Now I'm anxious about having an anxiety induced seizure. Your kidneys generate over 150 liters of pre-urine every day. Our immune system has these suicidal M known as neutrophils. These neutrophils are typically the first cell that is activated when there is an infection or some issue, and they don't care what they attack. When they see something to fight, what they do is release chemicals, chemokines and cytokines, which cause even more of themselves to come and fight whatever off, along activating other immune cells. If the pathogen, let's say bacteria, is covered with antibodies, the neutrophil just eats them, and lets acid inside the neutrophil burn the bacteria away. If they are not covered in antibodies, the neutrophil release granules of acid, proteins which burn holes into cells. Not just bacteria, these chemical and proteins also injure our own cells. Once all the chemicals are spent, the neutrophil then kills itself, but splurts out its DNA with proteins attached, which forms a sort of web. This web traps bacteria, prevents them from moving, and kill them. They are the reason why we have pus. Pus is actually mostly dead neutrophils after they've suicided themselves to kill everything they see. Endoscopy nurse here, before a procedure. 
patients are refrained from having solid foods and no dairy in their tea coffee. That the reason is because fats take a longer time to be processed by the body, needing to wait at least 6-8 hours if ingested to do a procedure than other foods. Might also be why people who are into keto do not feel hungry for most of the day. Also, it's evident to us when a patient has eaten fatty foods the day before a gastroscopy because the villi of the duodenum looks like it's coated with white paint. You have been visited by the water papa. You will be blessed with sunny beach days, but only if you comment swim safe, papa if you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.